The world's largest humanitarian crisis isn't in Syria. It's in Yemen. Thousands have been killed and millions have been displaced so far. The conflict has been going on for years, but it became especially violent in March 2015. That's when the Saudi-led coalition got involved. Now, the poorest country in the Arab region has become the violent playground for regional and international powers. So, how did it all start? After the Arab Spring toppled dictators across the Middle East, Yemenis won a change too. Their president, Ali Abdullah Saleh, was forced to hand over power to this guy, his deputy Abid Rabbo Mansour Hadi in November 2011. But the political transition to Hadi failed. There was massive unemployment, food insecurity, suicide bombings, and a separatist movement in the south. All that ended up sparking the war. On the one side, you had the Houthis, a political Shia rebel group, and people loyal to former President Saleh. On the other side, you had forces loyal to the new Hedi government. In 2014, Houthi forces took over Yemen's capital, Sana'a. Early the next year, the Houthis and Saleh loyalists tried to take control of the entire country, forcing Hedi to flee to Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia considered the Houthi actions an immediate threat and feared this could be an opportunity for Iran to gain a foothold on their border. Saudi Arabia accuses Iran of backing the rebels, but Tehran denies any involvement. So Saudi Arabia started an alliance and began a military campaign. It's had a devastating impact, with more than 10,000 people killed since February 2014 and forcing more than 3 million people to flee their homes. Several other countries are supporting this alliance with weapons, intelligence or logistics. Qatar was expelled from that coalition June 2017. The Saudi-led coalition wants to restore Hadi's government, but it's been unable to take back the north of the country, including its capital Sana'a. Meanwhile, fighters from Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula and affiliates of ISIL have taken advantage of the chaos. They seized parts of the south and stepped up their attacks in government-controlled Aden. As in every war, civilians are bearing the brunt of this one. The destruction of infrastructure and restrictions on food and fuel imports means 17 million Yemenis will face famine unless they receive humanitarian help soon. But that's not all. One fear is that international aid isn't getting to those who need it the most, making a cholera outbreak all the more difficult to control. Saudi actions have exacerbated the outbreak, but it can't be blamed on airstrikes alone. The majority of the outbreaks are in Houthi-governed areas, where they fail to manage the garbage and sewage that's filling the streets. And to make matters worse, two-thirds of Yemenis don't have access to clean water. So where does that leave us? Little ground has been gained, and several attempts to mediate the conflict have fallen apart. Since neither side shows any sign of giving up soon, Yemen is in a deadlock.